Hi everyone, this is my third video about electric rally choppers. Previously I featured the completed projects, uh, one of them here, the ultraviolet purple uh, one that I did a couple of years ago. I've now got a fresh project bike and this time I thought it might be interesting to share some of the process that I go through in upgrading, modifying, whatever you want to call it, taking this Mark III bike from, I believe, 2004 and turning it into something that looks like the classic bikes uh, but also, of course, has electric power. One thing that's going to be different about this build is that I'm going to change the bike's colour. I've seen quite a few choppers online in some really attractive metallic colours and my plan is to respray this bike in a metallic colour yet to be determined. Now, if I'm going to go to the trouble of uh, respraying, repainting this bike, I need to address one of the failings that uh, they all have, and that is the rather poor quality welding. I guess this is a kid's bike and nobody ever really worried about it at the time, but if I'm going to the trouble of uh, doing a decent paint job, I really need to uh, improve this and get rid of what I call pigeon poo welding. So we'll be spending a certain amount of time grinding this with an angle grinder and applying maybe some filler to bring it up to the standard that I can accept. I don't have any special tools. Uh, the painting, for instance, will be done with rattle cans and most of the work will be carried out in my garden shed. So let's get ahead and let me show you how to build an electric rally chopper. This is my uh, shed, come workshop, and it has all the essentials in here for life. Power, lighting, heating, radio, a bit of wall art, and coffee and plenty of chocolate biscuits. As you can see, the bike's stripped down to the frame. It's now uh, mounted on this stand, and it's ready for the next phase of work. So I find applying a bit of heat to the decal softens the glue and the actual decal itself making it easy to get off in one piece rather than it being chipped off in lots of little pieces. The next job I'm going to do is to modify the frame to accept the Mark II gear shifter mechanism. This is a cardboard template of the shape of the cutout that I need to achieve. But in order to be able to position this accurately on the frame, first of all I need to fit the gear shifter cover. Now a Mark II gear shifter cover won't fit directly to a Mark III frame because there are differences, notably this ramp here and the fact that the head tube is a large diameter. So I will need to carry out some surgery on the front of this plastic before I can fit it. Once it is fitted then the position of this slot here will dictate the position of the gear shifter mechanism on the frame below. The cover plate fits really well. Underneath you can see the shape of the cutout, so it's time to start cutting some metal. So that's the gear shifter mounted, two mounting bolts at the front and two additional brackets at the rear supporting the mechanism. Everything's functioning as it should do. Cover fits nicely over it. That job's done now so I'm going to remove this so I can press ahead with the work on the frame. The next job I'm going to do is address some of these welds and see if I can improve on them. I've got to be cautious and make sure I don't take away too much metal and weaken the strength of the welds, but I'm sure I can improve with this. Whilst I'm generally quite negative about the Mark III chopper, there's one thing they did get right and that was the paint finish. The paint on these Mark III's really is good. This bike's almost 20 years old now and the paint's as good as new. So it forms a very sound base for my respray.
next thing I'm going to do is to swap out the chain guard. The Mark III chain guard sits at a peculiar angle and doesn't really fit in with this section of the frame here. It also has a awful curved section which makes it look like it's been stolen from a kiddie's tricycle. So I'm going to do the right thing with this. I'm going to put it in my scrap metal bin. I'm going to replace it with a Mark II one. And what's critical for this is that it aligns up perfectly with this section of the frame. The front end will be attached using this top hat bracket that I fabricated. And the rear end will require me to drill and tap a hole in this section here. I'll also need to chop off this tab. That way I can ensure that it sits perfectly relative to the rest of the frame. I've now got the frame up to a standard that I'm happy with and it's primed ready for colour. If I were simply to paint this a solid colour it'd be spray it that colour, job done. If I were to choose a metallic paint I'd need to have a third stage which would be lacquer on top to bring out the metal flakes. I'm actually using a paint called Candy Forest Green and that's a four stage process. And you can see on this sample sheet of aluminium here we start with a primer, this is a grey primer and a white primer, the end result doesn't seem to make much difference. And then it has this coarse metallic base coat which is a really bright flaky metallic finish. The colour coat is slightly translucent and that way you can actually see the metal flakes through the colour. And of course you then finally need the lacquer on it to really make the metal flakes pop and stand out. Now the challenge I see with this is to get the right level of colour on the paint. If I apply too little it would look patchy. If I apply too much it could obscure the metallic finish and make it look quite plain. So let's have a go. Here we go with spraying candy forest green paint. I'm now in a position to mount the decals. One of the great things about choppers is there's a whole army of people out there supplying parts, components and these decals. And I could have had these in virtually any colour I wanted. I chose to go for this mirror chrome because I think it contrasts nicely against the deep metallic green that I've chosen for the frame colour. You have to take your time and mark these out carefully. That way you can be sure that the decals are fitted perfectly square and in the right position. When I finish these I just one final piece of bling to attach and that's the badge on the front of the bike. Now this is an old style brass one but I'm a bit nervous about hammering rivets so close to my shiny new paintwork so I'm cheating with this. I fitted the rivets but chopped the backs off and this will be attached to the frame using double sided automotive trim tape. As you can see, I've removed the right hand crank arm from the main sprocket. This is so I can reuse these with the new motor. The reason for doing that is that all the fittings that come with this motor are in this satin black finish. It's nice, but it's not the look that I want for this bike. And if you take these alloy cranks and polish them up, they can look similar to chrome. They get a really nice finish. Add to that these old style pedals and it's the sort of look that I want. Finally, 
I'll be spraying this sprocket a bright silver colour so that it looks something similar to the original. I'm now ready to install the motor. These mid-drive motors will fit virtually any bike that has a standard bottom bracket. That is one that has an internal diameter of 33.5mm and is between 68 and 73mm wide. It's secured with this plate and two bolts and these two lock rings so it's really easy to mount. Now one feature that's unique to the Mark 3s is this additional bracing here. And I think it's a good thing because these motors can output up to 80 newton meters of torque. So this bracing gives me the confidence that this bike can handle the output of the motor however hard the bike is ridden. There are five electrical connections to the motor. There's input from the battery, a multi-way cable that goes to the front of the bike, to the brake levers, the throttle and the display a connection to the speed sensor on the rear wheel, a wire that goes to the front light and an optional gear change sensor but I won't be using that on this application. One of the biggest challenges when building an electric chopper is finding the correct location for the battery. The small frame size and unusual design mean that conventional locations such as a seat post are simply not available on the chopper because of the restrictions. Fortunately, I'll be fitting a longer Mark II seat to this bike and there is space just underneath it to accommodate a battery like this. This is a 10 ampere hour 36 volt battery and should give me about 20 miles of range with the 250 watt motor that I'll be using. I'll attach it to the seat using some thin aluminium like this which I'll wrap around and then attach using brackets made out of annual aluminium. We'll be using a CAD system, that's a cardboard AD design, to test out and refine my ideas. I always find this is helpful to use cardboard like this before I commit to actually cutting any of the metal. And as a final touch, I'll be covering the sides using some black faux leather, which is a similar material to that that covers the seat. Now, in order to be able to fit a Mark II seat and sissy bar to a Mark III frame, there's one further modification required. The internal diameter of the Mark III frames is larger than the Mark IIs. So I've had to fit these 15mm copper tubes to reduce that diameter. That ensures that a Mark II sissy bar will slot right in and with a small amount of grease applied to it that will ensure that the suspension operates as it should do. I've now installed the battery module underneath the seat. What I like about this installation is that it hasn't required any modification of the seat. The rear of the battery is supported by the back plate and the front of the battery is held in place by the same bolt that attaches the seat to the seat post. As you see this it's currently perched in position as a trial but it will only take me a few minutes to install it correctly. Once I've done that it will bring the build phase of this project to a close. It's now time to do a system check. As you can see I've fitted a colour display to this bike. In the centre it shows you the mileage and speed on the right hand side there's a digital display and bar graph showing the current battery voltage and remaining capacity. The bottom right shows your current pedal assist level. On the left hand side is another bar graph and digital display showing the power output in watts. Now bear in mind there is no load on the wheel during this test so you will see very little power actually indicated. So we're currently in first gear, power assist level 1. That's second gear. And that's third gear. Now the way the pedal assist levels work is that they not only control the power going to the motor, they also limit the speed that the motor will, will operate up to. 
So you'll see as I increase the pedal assist level, the speed will increase. Now the way this works is that if you were to exceed the limit that's been set for any particular level, the motor will back off and eventually switch off completely, meaning that under those circumstances, the only thing driving the bike is the rider. If you were then to subsequently slow down, the motor would gently kick in again and support you. And it's this smooth operation of the pedal assist that gives these electric bikes such a natural feel. Indeed, without a display showing you the power used, it's very difficult at times to know how much, if at all, the motor is supporting you. Now, if you're smart about how you use the combination of power levels and gears, you can get the most out of this bike. If you want to get some more exercise, then drop the power level down. That has the added benefit of extending the range. If, on the other hand, you encounter a steep hill, then you'll need to drop down the gear, increase the pedal assist, and that combination will get you up some of the steepest hills without too much problem. Now, although the Chopper is a lovely looking bike, it does have a bad reputation for being difficult to ride. That's not the case with an electric Chopper. And this bike will get you further, faster, more easily, whatever your capabilities are and whatever the terrain. So this is the completed bike. It's taken me about two months to complete this project. And I enjoy the whole process from finding the bike, sourcing the components and restoring them when necessary. And additionally, on this bike, I've had the fun of respraying it this dark green metallic colour. And I'm really pleased with the result. Now people often ask me how much does it cost to build a bike like this and that's difficult to answer accurately because of the variables of purchase price of the bike and what spares may or may not be required to get it to this standard. Suffice to say that this electric chopper has cost me significantly less than it would to purchase an original 1970s non-electric bike. Now, of course, this isn't an original 1970s bike, but a good part about that is I'm happy to use this as a daily rider without worrying about it getting scratched or dirty. Now, I like the look of these bikes as much as riding them, but I think the time has come to take it out for a spin and see if it rides as good as it looks. <laughs>